Yeah, but aren't we supposed to do the right thing for our client? Oh, <laughs> oh there you go. Bankers don't I'm think about that. Right thing stuff again. You don't want to make money? Fine. You know, and I was talking with my pastor yeah. uh, that Sunday after, and he was a real estate investor. Yeah. He had a bunch of rental houses. And I was like, why should me wanting to do the right thing be a badge of dishonor? Mm-hmm. You know why? You know I'm. I'm obviously I'm putting my pocketbook above, uh, or, or put the client's interest above my pocketbook. But in the big scheme of things, I'll be okay and I can sleep at night. And he was like, "Well, if you're going to do a mortgage company, Malcolm, how'd you do it?" And I said, "Well, first thing I do, I do commercial, because yeah. commercial is not a. It's not about the kitchen, and how big the yard is. It's about the math." Yep. You know. And you, you know, he's well, how'd you set that up? Well, you gotta open an office, you gotta get some, you know, basic, you know, fax mm-hmm. machines, some laptops, blah, 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 blah. And I says, and then you know, you're gonna have to set up some uh, alliances and some relationships with some lenders and you know, blah blah blah. And I was like, and I just talked top my hand up to about 20 minutes. I'm like, yeah, that's about how we do it. He's like, okay, let's do it. I was like, what? <laughs> I thought we we're t- you asking me hypothetical. Right. Like I wasn't actually thinking about doing it because we should do it. Because you know, you, like I trust you like a brother. You know, yep. I know real estate. You know finance. We could be a great team. Yep. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, we should talk to our wives. He's like, I gotta talk to my wife. I make all <laughs> the, I make all the business decisions. <laughs> you you gotta talk to your wife, right? I was like, okay, well, I got to talk to my wife, you know, <laughs> and uh, um, and I was like, yeah, but, you know, here's the thing, bro. I love you. You know, I love you, but you don't know anything about mortgages. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to be a little unevenly yoked, right, in this yep. in the relationship. Because I don't to do everything or to train you on everything, yep. you know, and he's like, and then we're splitting everything 50-50. And he's like, yeah, that's true, you know, mm-hmm. and I was like, and I don't want to mess up our relationship, you know. Yep. And so he's like, well, you know what? Here's, here's the thing. You set it up. You tell me what we need to do, how we're going to do it. I you're going to have to train me on the stuff I don't know, blah, blah, blah. I'll fund it. And then you put all the sweat equity into the thing. And I was like, okay. oh. So now that becomes worth it. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Because I'm not feeling like I'm being taken advantage of. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? I'm doing all the work. And I'm yeah. getting half the money, right? Yep. So I was like, yeah, okay. And we did that. And then, you know, 16 years later, we're still cooking. Now, in 2019, mm-hmm. um, we crossed over from being a, a commercial mortgage broker to being a lender. Okay. You know, and, and that mm-hmm. happened with a, fi- a quick phone call. A, uh, a billion dollar mortgage fund called me mm-hmm. and said, hey, do you have any paper? that you want to sell right so yep. in other words i've got mortgages people are making payments and they'll yeah. buy it in the so so before right. you go further like explain what when somebody says paper what does that mean i know what that means but the mortgage maybe the viewers note. Are, the note okay the mortgage note so if 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 there are 200 let's say there's 200 months of payments left yep right at a thousand dollars a month Mm-hmm. Right, it's a time value of money calculation. Right, yeah. so what is that? What's the debt present value of that income stream? Right, and, and also yeah. you look at the debt and yep. the value of the asset. There's there's a couple other factors, and then also present interest rates. Mm-hmm. Right, so if I've got a note at seven um, percent and current rates are at six, mm-hmm. that paper is worth more. Yeah right you know because of the higher rate mm-hmm. on it you know yeah, relative so all those things it gets when you talk about selling and buying paper it gets really complicated those are the brilliant the bond investors on wall street are the really mm-hmm. smart guys at the table okay versus guys that are just buying the company it gets yeah. way more complicated when you're looking at that side of it but so i know i told the guys listen i don't have any paper he's like what do you mean he goes, we're just a broker. He goes, yeah, but when I search commercial loans in Michigan, you're on the first page of Google. You're doing something right. And I'm like, yeah, our SEO game is pretty good. Yeah. 
There's no, there's no doubt about that. But no, I'm just a broker. And he's like, well, I'm not a lender. And he was like, oh, okay. Well, you want to be one? And I was like, well, what do you mean? And he's like, well, okay. I'll, you know, if you're doing, you know, good business, we'll buy your paper. Okay. So if you sell the paper yourself, and then we'll come behind and buy it. And then, you know, that, which is how everyone works, right? I mean, banks. Yeah. You know, banks just use Ginnie Mae, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. They do mm -hmm. a mortgage. They go to Fannie Mae, right? That's why for, for like, uh, rental investors, mm -hmm. they can't get past 10 loans, okay. right? Yeah. Because the bank says, I, I got to cut you off because Fannie Mae won't buy that 11th note. Right. They say the person can carry no more than 10 mortgages at any moment in time. They, they give you a hard time about number five, too. So, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so they're like, OK, well, you know, and so yeah. they, if, the, if the bank can't sell that paper and there's no opportunity to create liquidity, even just in case they need it later, mm -hmm. they're like, nah, we're not doing it. So, you know, now in in our sector there's private money which okay. is huge the yeah private money market is huge because everyone's getting to the real estate game you got pension funds you got life insurance companies you got hedge funds you've got crowdfunding you have all these private money funds that are now investing in commercial paper and i say commercial paper being mortgages that are not on um residential um, home loans. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there was a, a thing in the in the paper. Some of you guys may have seen it, where like Blackstone was getting into the rental market. Yeah, where they were buying rental property because they're like they're like you guys. They're looking at I'm getting a thousand dollars in rent mm -hmm. for a house that only costs this much money. That's way better return than a bond, and I got security in that investment. Yeah. Right. So now these guys are playing um, in that pond, you know, so yeah. we went through the vetting process and, and um, with those guys. And after, you know, a few months or I'll say a few, probably about two months, yeah. uh, we became a lender. So now I have three funds, three mm -hmm. mortgage funds that that fuel all my paper internally. That's awesome. Now, real okay. quick. Now, real quick. Anybody out there? Who has any questions for this man for myself anything like that put them in the comments please we will answer them here you know um you know sunny uh sunny harvin we see you here i know you're using your daughter's account here so uh great at least you're joining us now um mike michael ostranger ostrander uh great dude it was great meeting you the other day uh great to have you here Anybody who's here, put a comment in there. Put a comment in the in the chat. Ask your questions. Let us know while we're talking. We'll answer them as we go. But let's interact. This is a, a two way street, everybody. All right. Um, if for some reason you're watching us replay, still leave a comment. I will answer them right away as much as possible. So just to let you know. Now, um, so we'll get back back on track here. Um, now, as far also anybody who doesn't understand what paper is, leave a comment. We can explain a little bit further into detail if you don't. Um, any questions you have, please let us know. So, um, back to what you were saying. Um, you know, happy to um, kind of work from there and uh, see where well, where we're going. We do. Um we, we are still a broker so because no lender funds everything right yeah so there's deals that you know um um you know we don't do i mean you know we don't do every circumstance right so on situations where it uh, someone brings me a deal that is a a a fundable deal but it's just not fundable with my Mm -hmm. internal paper that's when i'll go outside and i'll take my lender hat off yep. and i put my broker hat on mm -hmm. and then there's other capital sources that we work with uh, that we close business with 
you know, whenever it happened. We still right heard of it. Because typically when you go to the bank and the bank says no, you know, yeah. you're out. Exactly. You know, because the bank, because, and this is something some people don't know. Um, and we're, matter of fact, I'm writing a book right now on funding the unbankable deal. Okay. And there's a there's a, a section a chapter in there about how the internal the inside baseball of how banks work, right? Which mm -hmm. is every loan officer at the bank also has a deposit quota. They okay. have to do so many loans per quarter, but they also have to bring in so many so much money in deposits, mm -hmm. um, because that's the flow. Everything happens when a bank brings in money, and so um, if someone does a loan at chase for let's say you know a million dollar apartment building hypothetically chase also wants to do all the banking on all those rents through chase yep as a condition of the loan now if that person is banking at pnc bank and pnc bank wouldn't do the deal but chase would you know then they're going to leave pnc bank yep there's no there's no universe where chase is going to let that cash flow mm -hmm. go through someone else and they they did the loan. <laughs> That's, yeah. that's not going to happen. That So that being the case, when PNC turns you down, they don't say, oh, well, Chase is lending on multifamily right now. Right. Mm -mm. They don't do it. They just say, well, we're sorry we couldn't help you. You know, the yeah. next deal. Right. Well, you know, I, I tell a story in, in, in my book of um, I, I met with a bank VP Mm -hmm. about referring business to us because we typically don't deal um with banks on a lot of our financing yep and they and our non-bank lenders don't have deposit minimums so we don't care where they like when i do a loan myself i don't care yep. where they bank okay so it's safe for the bank to send me a customer that they turn down i do the loan and they stay at at that bank yeah right so i'm doing lunch with this guy we're walking out of this restaurant in birmingham we're headed back to uh, their their bank branch in, in Bloomfield. The guy says, oh, by the way, um, the fact that we're not doing inland or multifamily right now, don't mention that. that that's that's confidential. You know, we talked about we're going to share some confidential stuff. Yeah. So, and, and by the way, that's also confidential with the loan officer. So don't tell him either. <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> Your old guy don't know? Right. Wow. That's, that's messed up that's messed up but that's why if you guys go on linkedin and you look at the profile of the typical banker mm -hmm. or commercial loan officer at the bank yeah most of them have a tenure no more than three years at any one institution and wow. then they're jumping ship to someone else you know for various reasons but a lot of it because you know they play games with their bonus yeah uh, they're trying to do loans they're trying to bring in deposits and they're like okay i'm stuck at like 50 grand mm -hmm. and i can't you know i should do better than that so we got uh, a question from terry penny which awesome person by the way mm -hmm. uh hopefully i'll have her next on my podcast uh but she said, hey, um, what's the typical minimum uh, loan amount for a commercial loan? That varies depending on the type of property. Okay. Right. So multifamily is different from retail, which is different from industrial. Um, different um, locations will also have minimums. Okay. So sometimes like, like, like one of our funds, um, they're very, very robust in their lending okay. but um if they're dealing with a property in detroit i was just about to ask specifically yep they won't do anything under uh five hundred thousand dollars okay you know and if they're doing if, and if i'm doing like um um for example fix and flips you know yep. we're doing sfr fix and flips there's some folks that are like yeah we'll go down to seventy five thousand or fifty thousand Mm -hmm. But in these certain markets, and they'll say Miami, San Diego, Detroit, Boston, mm -hmm. they'll name them. In any of these markets, minimum is 100000 Right. So location will come in, will, will, will come into play. Most of our commercial stuff, 
um, especially if we're doing bridge loans, mm -hmm. uh, we can go down to 200,000. Okay. okay. If we're not doing a bridge loan and we're doing straight long-term financing, mm -hmm. then a lot of our programs, the minimum starts at 500,000. Got it. So Ron, uh, Ron Harrell, and I know I butchered that last name. Sorry about that. Uh, the reason it says Facebook on the screen is because it's from the Facebook group. If you haven't been from the face, if you haven't, uh, if you're not on the Facebook group, it's Metro Detroit off market real estate group on Facebook, come join. Um, but if you want a better viewing experience, view us on YouTube. All right. I'm trying to build that channel as much as possible. Like, subscribe on YouTube. 